Jesus said to the crowd, Is it not written, You are gods? He was speaking to them because they wanted to put him to death, stone him to death, because he called himself the Son of God. And in response to this crowd that wanted to stone him for blasphemy, since he called himself the Son of God, he quoted a psalm to them, a psalm from their own scriptures, which said, You are gods. That word gods is translated from the Hebrew word Elohim. And that word Elohim is mostly translated as God in the Bible. It refers to God, the God of heaven, most of the time. That word can also be translated as judges, as in human leaders or dignitaries. And so I've heard people teach that Jesus, no, 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 he wasn't actually saying that you are gods. He was saying you are judges, you are nobles and dignitaries. Because obviously we are not gods, right? And obviously Jesus wouldn't say you are gods, especially a rebel-rousing crowd holding stones, wanting to stone him. Obviously, these people are not gods. Obviously, Jesus wouldn't call them gods. Therefore, this word can't be gods. Therefore, Jesus must have been saying to these people that you are judges and nobles and dignitaries. A word that is most of the time translated as God, suddenly cannot be translated as God. Because the people who teach these things can't believe that they could be gods. Jesus in John chapter 3 says, you must be born again. He said that to Nicodemus, the Jewish teacher who came under the cover of darkness to talk to him. What does it mean to be born again? If you're born again, and Jesus specifically said you must be born of the Spirit. If you're born of the Spirit, you are Spirit. If you are born of like myself, my father is a Han Chinese. I'm Han Chinese. Simple as that. Something that is born of a dog is a dog. Something that's born of a cat is a cat. <laughs> Something that is born of God is a God. So, like, I mean, People just can't deal with it. <laughs> they just can't accept it. But that's the fact. Jesus made no bones about it. He said to this crowd, this crowd that was trying to kill him, this crowd that couldn't believe that a man could be the son of God, he said to this crowd, you are gods, you are Elohim. Not because they were good well-behaved people, not because they were enlightened, they were trying to kill him without due process, mind you. So they're wrong on so many counts. So he's not saying that, first of all, he's not saying that you are judges and you are noble people, because it defies logic. He quoted that scripture to say that, how can you fault me for saying I am the son of God when your scriptures say, you are gods. 
it doesn't make sense if he says, How can you fault me for calling myself the Son of God when you are judges and noble people? It doesn't make sense. So in terms of logic and context, it doesn't make sense. In terms of the usage of the word, it doesn't make sense not to translate it as God's. So to the credit of the Bible translator, it translated as God's, as it should be, as it is mostly translated in scriptures. I just hear preachers who preach this message, this passage of scripture. They read, they read the words that Jesus said and said, the way Jesus said, you are God's, quoting the psalm. And immediately, without exposition, without explanation, without logic, they say, Jesus didn't actually mean to say that they are God's. Based on what? <laughs> Jesus quoted a scripture that says, you are God's. Because this crowd that was trying to kill him without due process, with, without spiritual insight, because if they had spiritual insight, they would have realized he was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the incarnation of the divine. These people he called gods. So it's not because you and I are good or enlightened or clever, or holy, or pious, that we are gods. We are gods because we are born of God. Made in the image of God. That's the starting point. Now when you look in the mirror, and you need to ask yourself whether you are a god or a devil. And if you are a god, does the manifested reality of your life match up to that fact? And if it does not, then that's why Christ came, isn't it? To make right that which is wrong, to bring salvation, to bring forgiveness to those who repent. And repent, the word is metanoia. It means to think again. To rethink your ways, to reconsider, to shift your paradigm. Are you a worm scrabbling on the ground, trying to become an eagle? Or are you an eagle that has forgotten its true nature and is scrabbling like a worm, trying to become? what you already are. In the Garden of Eden, the temptation that the devil gave Adam and Eve was that if you eat the forbidden fruit, you will be And it's been said that the temptation of the devil is to tempt you to want to become like God. But if you read it carefully in its context, they were perfect. And how were they perfect? In what state of perfection were they? It says in Genesis chapter 1 that God made them in His image, in the imago dei, the imago, the image of God. It's not a shadow, it's not a mirror image, it's not a hazy picture taken with a camera. It is the imago. The, where else have you seen that word imago being used? A fetus, isn't it? A fetus. At some point in our lives, we were all an imago. A fetus in our mother's womb. We eventually grew out of that stage. But we never ceased to be a human. The imago just grew up and now I'm a 42 year old imago, grown up. Still the same being that was a 
six inch imago in my mother's womb. I did not change. I'm the same being. And when Adam and Eve were made in the imago dei, the image of God, it's not a picture. It is a state of being. 